Welcome back to Royals Weekly. I am your host, Marcus Mead, and joining me as always, the last king of Scottsdale, my brother Mike. <laughs> so, <laughs> so audience, uh, what you must know for this is that Mark uh, explained to me that he was going to do this joke before uh, <laughs> we did it today, which he never does. I always get these like fresh off the thing, and I had no clue what he was talking about either, so don't feel bad. I have no clue what he means by this. <laughs> I don't know. He then went on to explain it to me, and I thought the first thought I had in my mind, it, he went he went on to tell me he's been trying to tell this joke for a year. For a year, yeah. he's been holding on to that joke. First thought in my mind, man, if I wait for a joke for a year, it better be better than that one. <laughs> that's what yeah. I was thinking the whole time. I was like, ooh, that's not good. But okay, yeah, I'm honestly, the king of Scottsdale, Arizona. Ugh. Honestly, I know that it's not good, but I have to tell it so it just gets out of there. <laughs> Okay, I can't it's keep thinking there. about this joke, which I know isn't funny. I can't do it. Like, and so that's what you're getting this week, Weekly Weirdos, because that's what's in my brain. Okay, we are near Scottsdale, Arizona. Last uh, King of Scottsdale is a take on the film The Last King of Scotland with uh, Forrest Whitaker and James McAvoy. It was a big hit a while back. Uh, in fact, I think Forrest Whitaker won an Academy Award for it. Um, and so, you know, no big deal. But and nobody they're, remembers they're doing it. the Oscars. And so. so. Yeah, that is the Oscars tonight. This is my ode to, I'm going to pretend that I thought about this ahead of time, and this is my ode to the Oscars tonight, <laughs> uh, which exactly. is not at all what happened, because I forgot it was tonight. Um, this week's episode is a very special, as it kicks off our week of spring training coverage down here in uh, Phoenix, lovely Phoenix, Arizona, or, or thereabouts anyway. Uh, we'll be down here all week watching games, skulking around the backfields, Mike's a real good skulker, and just generally sweating, which is what I'm doing currently, and also what I did all day. Um, and so, you know, there's going to be a lot of that, but you're definitely going to get the top notch content, all the insights that come from two dudes who are sweating a lot, uh, to make sure you're seeing all of that great content and hearing all that great content, go over to royalsweekly.substack.com and jump on as a paid subscriber with us. We're putting out, Mike's going to put out daily, uh, posts, uh, updating what we saw at camp and our observations, uh, from training camp. We're putting out a tons of episodes. We'll put out our weekly episode just for paid subscribers of our Substack on Thursday morning. Um, but if you're not ready to jump, uh, take the plunge with us over on Substack, we will be putting out an episode basically every day, except for that Thursday morning one. Uh, just a quick 20 minute thing every day from uh, Surprise. So, so that you're from Arizona. We're not in Surprise, but from somewhere here in Arizona that uh, you can hear uh, wherever you get podcasts. So make sure you're following along. Uh, I want to do a one thing, and that's thank all of our wonderful sponsors who help make trips like this possible for us. And uh, that will begin by me saying Royals Weekly is brought to you by All In Physical Therapy. For one-on-one -on -one personalized physical therapy, we choose All In Physical Therapy. They took excellent care of our mother after surgery left her with pain and limited mobility in her arm. She loves to work out, be active. Triathlons aren't really enough for mom, so she invented octathlons just, just to test herself, just to take it to the limit. The excellent specialized care she got at All In Physical Therapy had her back to being active in no time. That's eight events, including gator roping and gazelle tackling. Mother yeah. wins the gold every year. She had to get creative with it. All In Physical Therapy knows how to help athletes recover. It's owned and operated by Lee Summit's own Tommy Freebert, Freevert, a former Arena League football player, Northwest Missouri State Bearcat, and a hell of a guy. They have offices in both Blue Springs and Lee Summit, so get over there to work with Tommy. Tell your doctor you want to do your physical therapy with the best of the best at All In Physical Therapy. To learn more, give them a call at 816-427-5300. That's 816-427-5300. Or visit their website at allin-pt.com. That's A-L-L-I-N-PT.com. As you all know, we start our review of last week with roster news, but there was virtually no roster news from the Royals last week, which is, again, another good sign. We said this last week. It's a good sign when they don't have a ton of roster news in spring training because that means a bunch of guys aren't getting hurt. And that's what we ultimately want from spring training. No injuries. Uh, the Royals have sent a bunch of minor league guys down to minor league camp, but that's a thing that happens every year as the roster start to pare down, getting closer to the end of spring training. So a bunch of guys who you would expect to be sent down to minor league camp have been sent down to minor league camp, but that's really no big deal. We did get a little bit, we did dodge a little bit of a bullet. Uh, Dyron Blanco left a game, I think yesterday. Yes, yesterday uh, with a, what turned out to be a foot cramp. All they said was lower body injury initially, but it just turned out to be a foot cramp. So he should be fine. Um, we also are getting pretty good news on Jordan Lyles and his recovery from the back tightness that he had. He threw a bullpen on Saturday, 
that went well. So he's going to, he's going to progress to throwing to live hitters on Monday, March 11th, uh, hoping to get Lyles back in time to ramp him up for the start of the season. On the field last week, the Royals went three and two, which brings their overall record to 11 and five, which is second in the Cactus League behind the Dodgers. Uh, It was a little bit of an odd week because they got an off day to start the week and then they had a rain out during the week, which often (laughs) obviously very rarely happens in Arizona. You don't see a rain out very often, Uh, but they did manage to go three and two. Um, And so, Mike, how do you feel about how the team looked last week in spring training? I feel pretty good. It's it's pretty promising to me. The The offense was able to get going in a way that we had kind of been asking for it to. Now, the pitching probably, especially the starting pitching, probably took a step back this week. We saw some guys like Singer today. Waka struggled a little bit in his start. Um, we saw, you know, the other guys were really good. Cole Reagans, we happened to lose him for the rainouts. So we didn't get to see him this week but or this past week. But, uh, yeah, I feel pretty much good. We're entering a time, like you mentioned today, where – Sometimes starters' arms are tiring and offenses are now catching up. And so that's kind of exactly what we're seeing here. But overall, I'm very happy with where they are right now and and how they did this week. Yeah, I don't think there's that much to really get uh, too unhappy about from last week. I mean, we're starting to see some guys start to really hit, especially guys who the Royals are counting on to be in the center of their lineup. We're going to talk about some of those guys in a minute, but you know, Salvador Perez is hitting Vinny Pascantino had a couple of good uh, hits this week. Uh, he, in fact, a game where I think MJ. He, went, he had three hits. MJ Melendez continues to hit uh, Velasquez got on the board with a three hit game and started looking a little bit better. And so, yeah, the offense is starting to take off, at least while the starting pitching is maybe taking a slight step back. But at least the offense looks like they're getting their timing down. They're getting it going uh, offensively, which I think is a just a perfect transition to talking about Mike's strong performer for the week. Mike, who did you have for, as a strong yeah. performer for last week in uh, Royals spring training action? There, there hasn't been anybody offensively who has been as hot as Nick Prado on this team. Nick Prado is killing it. We saw it today. He went three for four today at the game we were at. He had an opposite field home run, probably kind of an Arizona home run, but hit the ball hard. I mean, and then he had hit a single that probably should have been a double, if not for a, a really hard, uh, really great play by the right field to get the ball in. And then he struck, he walked once. So, yeah, he didn't go three for he four. Waited. He went two for three with a walk. Oh, with a walk. Yeah. Sorry. I forgot the, the walk in there. Sorry. Um, but G- he just looked great today. He really did. Even the strikeout that he had, it was on a really borderline pitch that he took. And so. Yeah, I was, I've been very impressed with what we saw from him. He had a triple, a home run, four RBIs this week, two strikeouts to one walk. And that's, there's real progression. It looks like for Nick Prado. It does. And it's really about what the plate appearances look like for Nick Prado. There's more aggressiveness there's, and you can see it. Yeah. He did take a third strike today in an O2 count. I think it was O2, um, which you don't love to see, but there are other moments earlier in at bats when he's being aggressive with, with pitches in the strike zone. Like if he gets down Oh one and somebody throws him something in the strike zone, he's swinging because he knows if he gets to Oh two, the odds in that plate appearances get even worse. And if that's a pitch he can hit, he needs to try and hit it. And so we saw that some today from him. And that was really good to see Uh, the only hitter who might really be matching him. And I think he probably is, is Michael Massey who over last week went four for seven with two home runs one double, zero walks and zero strikeouts. The zero walks is something we'd be like, eh, I'd like to see Massey walk a little bit, but the zero strikeouts is fantastic. He's putting the ball in play. He's pulling the ball hard a lot, which is really his MO. And the thing that sets him apart as a hitter is he has the capacity to really pull the ball and have power from second base. And so two home runs this week showed, and a double, three extra base hits, showed that Massey could be an offensive force if he can limit the strikeouts I think it, then he's got a chance and that's all about approach and that's all about getting yourself in good counts, but he definitely has the the hit tool to do it. He definitely has the power to do it. Uh, he get, Hopefully he keeps this rolling. I think he's really putting to bed any conversation that he might not be the second baseman going into opening day. Yeah, completely agree. Um, today was kind of the, the, the both sides of Michael Massey. He, he, the first hit he got, I think he swung at the very first pitch in a line drive to right center. Like it was a good, good swing. It was smart. It was a good thing, but, but we've always been saying we need him to swing less. We need him to see more pitches, things like that. Well, I can't remember if it was a second at bat or third at bat, but he really worked a count today and got a hit from that as well. So it was like, Hey, that it, that's the Michael Massey you want to see really having a solid approach and knowing what he's doing. And uh, if he does that, it, you know, it's just spring training. So is it just another hot Michael Massey streak? 
I can't answer that right now, but I'm, I'm optimistic about some of the uh, approach changes we've seen. And the fastball he or the first pitch fastball he swung at and hit for a line drive. It made sense to swing at that first pitch because Massey was hitting six today. And the first five guys who went up there, Paul Blackburn was trying to get pitches just across the plate for a strike every first pitch. So he was seeing, he was throwing yeah. a lot of get me over curve balls he, or breaking balls, a lot of fastballs, you know, that were very hittable on pitch one. Some guys were taking them. Some guys were swinging, but Massey recognized there's a good chance. He's just going to throw me a very hittable pitch on pitch one. I'm going to rope it into right field. Like, and that's what he did. Like, and so yeah. Blackburn in his next at bat wasn't so keen on throwing a, a, fa- a pitch down yeah. the heart of the plate on, on OO, you know, like, uh, and so yeah. that's what we saw. It looked like guys today swinging early in counts. It looked like they were, especially for Blackburn, they were really looking for that fastball period. And so that was, that was kind of a cool thing to, to see. And they punished it early in the game. They really did. Not everybody had a fantastic week last week, especially in that starting rotation. Mike, tell us about a starter who uh, struggled, who was on the struggle bus a little bit last week. Yeah, it wasn't Michael Walker's best outing uh, when he went the other day, but you look at the number two and two thirds innings pitched in, in that start, you probably wanted him going a full three. Um, he had to give up three earned runs, two walks and three Ks. So this is like kind of the weird thing in a spring training thing, or when a guy only pitches once in a week for our, the layout of our show is that if you actually listen to that game, you'll realize it was those two walks that cost him pretty much everything. Uh, he walked, I think back to back guys in that game and then they ended up coming around to score. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's, anything to worry about. I'm still not worried about anything like that. I think uh, he still had three strikeouts in those two and two thirds innings. So Michael Waka is still going to be fine. Not worried at all. Singer, you're a guy. I'm a little bit more worried. Sorry to give it away. Spoiler alert. Uh, Yes. I'm talking about another (laughs) starter, Brady Singer. And I want to be clear because Brady Singer was actually good in his first outing this week. He had two outings this week. He was good in his first outing. He was really, really bad today. Uh, And the weird thing was, you and I were there. We watched the whole outing. We were pretty intensely focused on how good Singer was or wasn't. And the first inning was okay, Singer. He was his fastball was sitting in about 92, 93. It looked okay. His two seamer anyway. Uh, you know, he he I think maybe gave up a walk to start the game. Maybe gives let some guys on base in that first inning, but ultimately got out of it. The second inning, things started to fall apart. His velocity was down to 91, 92 on that two seamer. He could not throw a slider for a strike. And so everybody on the A's lineup is taking every slider he's throwing and just roping every two seamer he throws into the outfield for a, as a line drive. They were hitting line drives off that two seamer all day. He could not throw really anything else for a strike. He tried a couple changeups, no strikes there. He, the sweeper, he got a swinging strike on in a, in a key uh, count at one point. And, and then Oakland helped him out a couple times in some other at bats, but really he just did not have it. The two seamer wasn't effective today. The slider wasn't effective today. It was a day where he went out and tried to pitch without his two best pitches. And really while he's added some pitches, he he's not added them to the point where it's like, I can spend a day just relying on my sweeper and four seamer. That's not him yet. And so, you know, it, it was going to be a rough day for him today because those two pitches weren't there. Yeah, and he almost got killed by one of those line drives. I mean, he was four inches from a hospital room, uh, 110 miles per hour off the bat. So it was, yeah, uh, yeah. that inning was rough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So maybe he's leaving today's start just thinking, hey, I'm just glad that, you know, I don't have a crack in my skull because it, it looked no bad. He could have, he could have gotten hit pretty bad there. Uh, Mike, in a week that was basically a, you know, decent week for the Royals. What was your theme uh, looking back at the uh, week in its entirety? Okay. I'm going with a, a Brooklyn nine, nine thing. For those of you who are nine niners, uh, you know, Jake likes to go, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> like that. That's what I'm thinking when I'm seeing Nick Prado spray balls all over the field and be more aggressive and, and do those things. And Salvador Perez just amass hits, you know, uh, he looks to be in a little bit better shape and he's, he's really hitting the ball all over the place and, and uh, putting them out and to see Velasquez have that three hit game and Vinny have a little bit more offensive success. It makes me go, okay, stop giving me hope Royals. Stop winning games. Stop, you know, playing well uh, at times in certain groups. And so, yeah, I, it, it, but it was good to see. It was a good, uh, it was a good thing to go out there and, and then see today, even though they lost, 
you know, we had that, you know, we Bray or uh, Blackburn. We really got to him in the second inning, uh, hit the ball really hard. A lot of guys, even Kyle Isbell, who got out a couple times today on really hard hit balls, looked pretty good. Um, so yeah, it was good. Yeah, I think every ball, or at least maybe every ball Isbell put in play today was over a hundred miles an hour, and he didn't get a single hit. It was, it was, yeah. uh, it was rough for him out there today, but, uh, he, he had great plate appearances. Uh, and so that was encouraging to see those balls will fall. If he keeps having those types of plate appearances, uh, I'm going with the theme of you spin me right round, baby, right round, uh, classic eighties from a uh, hit from Mike. Do you know, remember who did that song? Culture club? No, culture no, club. It's not culture Boy, club. Boy George, no, it's not. That's not culture. It's club? not them. No, uh, I'm not going to look it up, but I'm sure in the comments, somebody tell us who did uh, that song. Oh, I'm looking I'm that looking up. I think it's I, Culture I it's Club. Uh, but I, I put this down as my theme for this week because if I f- kind of feel like I'm spinning around a little bit with like the starters regressing and the hitters taking off. And I'm like, oh, wait, the starters were doing really well early. Now, now this happens in spring training sometimes, but I'm kind of like in a daze and, you know, like looking around like, oh, where are we going? Where are we going? What's it going to be tomorrow? You know, tomorrow. And so, you know, it's, it, it, I'm, I feel a little discombobulated by spring training just because the lineups are starting to solidify and the pitching is starting to like, you know, fall apart or fell apart a little bit uh, this last week. Uh, so I'm hoping to get a little more cohesion with the starters dominating and the hitters dominating. Is that too much to ask for? I don't think so. <laughs> Two at one time. Uh, by the way, you spin me right round is... Was it dead or alive? Never, never, I knew never, that. N- never even know. By the way, you might hear some background noise. We are in Arizona and apparently there are many barking dogs and ambulances or something. Police car. I don't know exactly what's going <laughs> on, but I hear sirens, um, which is weird because last year we ha- heard like cannon fire or something. Uh, anyway, Royals Weekly is brought to you by Nat Family Wealth. Mike, can you think of anything more important than securing your financial future? Watching my high school football highlights and drinking alone in the dark. No. <laughs> Securing your financial future is one of the most important steps that someone can take for themselves and their family, and Nat Family Wealth is ready to help you pursue it. This isn't some big, faceless corporation we're talking about here. Nat Family Wealth is run by J.C. Knapp. He's a huge baseball fan, and he's been helping people prepare for their financial futures for more than 20 years. He can help with retirement planning so you don't have to work until you're dead, education planning so your kids learn to read good, investment management so you get all that money from out of your mattress and get it working for, for you. Don't spend another day thinking you've got it all figured out because trust me, you don't. Check out Nap Family Wealth at napfamilywealth.com. That's K-N-A-P-P familywealth.com. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA slash SIPC. In today's spotlight segment, we're going to cut through the bowl hockey and get right down to it. (laughs) I love that term, by the way. Evaluating players in spring training is tough because spring training performance often doesn't translate to the regular season. It takes a keen eye and mind to understand what might transition from the Cactus League to the regular season. And despite those two requirements, we're still going to give it a shot and try and figure out what from spring training is real, uh, you know, on our own, you know. And what's fake? In a format I'm calling No Fakesies Backsies, okay? It's easy. I'm going to bring up a spring training phenomenon. I like new fake seat, no fake seat, back seats. Um, Make the board game now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to bring up a spring training phenomenon and we're each going to say whether we think it's real or fake, but we're going to say it by saying fake seats or no fake seats just to keep it complicated for you guys. Mike, <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Sure. You are. Um, how many, how many deep are you right now, Mike? Like six, seven, eight. <laughs> uh, I don't it's, know. We're what you're on vacation about too, folks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, fake sees, no fake sees. Cole Reagan being Cy Young caliber. I'm going no fake sees. The the evidence now is plentiful. And had had he come in this spring and looked different from the pitcher that we saw at the end of last year in the 12 or whatever starts that he had for the Royals last year, then I might be more skeptical. But we've only seen good Cole Reagans, you know, we've only since he added the slider and since he, you know, cut back on the cutter and has added this velocity now. I mean, even, even again this year with, I mean, he's throwing really, really hard. Um, he looks legit. I mean, he, you heard the, the left-handed Jacob deGrom comp or whatever that came out this year or this, uh, past week. That's, 
that's that's a real deal right there. So I'm I'm taking Cole Riggins. I'm not saying he's going to win it. It's always health dependent. Honestly, there's other factors like how good are the Royals this year that could do that. But it would not surprise me if he stays healthy if he's not in the Cy Young conversation. Yeah, I'm going no fakes as well, and basically for the same reasons that you are, you are. You're uh, like we've seen him come into spring training and start doing things that really no other pitchers do. You know, there are no other left-handed pitchers who throw 101 with the kind of movement on his fastball that Cole Reagans gets. There are no other pitchers who can basically just throw the ball right down the middle and still get everyone out. Like Cole Reagans is a phenomenon. Cole Roy- Reagans is, you know, a, a, a talent level that the Royals have not had. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to go way, way back. A talent level the not Royals really haven't had. I'm thinking maybe I can't even think, right? Like I can't even think like you could say Zach Greinke, but honestly, was Zach Greinke's ceiling ever what Reagan's ceiling looks like it might be, right? Like, I don't know that that's the case, right? And so, you know, uh, at, at I least would in say, terms of peak, yeah. Greinke did it for a long time at an extremely high level. And so you can't, he's not even in the same conversation with Greinke in terms of his overall greatness, right? But yeah. Zach Greinke never threw 101 with 20 inches of induced vertical break, right? Like Zach Greinke never threw the kind of, some of the kind of pitches that uh, Cole Reagans throws. It's, it's really incredible from the left side, you know, like, and so Cy Young caliber, I'm absolutely buying that. No fakes. He's theirs. I think that's uh that's on the money. If he stays healthy, it's always an, if he stays healthy, uh, Mike, Fakesies, no fakesies. Nason, Nelson Velasquez struggling. Right now he's got a 5'11 OPS in spring training. Yeah, I'm going to go fakesies because we've seen him. We, see, we saw him do a little better this week, first off, and that's that's a good sign. I think he had a walk maybe early in the week or late last week. He had that three-hit day that you mentioned earlier. You, you don't do what Nelson Velasquez did last year for, for the length that he did without having it in there. And I think really the key for him is just that strikeout rate, you know, and he's right now he's striking out about a quarter of the time. I think he's struck out five times in 23 at bats in spring training, um, which is fine. He can stay that because when he touches the ball with that bat, it's dynamite. The guy, the guy can put one out every time he gets it off his shoulder. So uh, Nelson Velasquez, I'm still buying. I'm saying, or I'm saying no fakesies here. I think he's going to, or sorry, fakesies because he's not doing well. I think he can do well. Sorry, your game's Mike, still you're confusing confused. me. You're confused by your own game, Mike. That's how. <laughs> yeah. that's, yeah. I didn't make up what, this game. Here? You did. <laughs> yeah, that's, why, that's what happens when, too. when I turn over creative direction to you. <laughs> yeah, when you turn it over. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. Uh, Nelson Velasquez struggling. I'm calling fakesies on that. I'm a big Velasquez truther, though. Like, I'm, like, deep into the Velasquez rabbit hole i have taken the red pill on 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 velasquez being good right and so uh yeah i just i i think about you're right mike like he's not striking out too much he's just having some bad batted ball outcomes now one of the concerns with velasquez coming over from the cubs was that he didn't hit the ball in the air enough right and there's some other concerns with him in terms of how he uh does against breaking balls and all that sort of thing but i really think he's just a guy who's finding his timing and it's taking longer than some other guys that's all it looks like to me. Uh, I, we haven't been able to see him in person since we've been here, but I have a feeling it's just Velasquez still struggling to find his timing. I think he's going to get it eventually, and we're going to see a guy who, like you said, when he makes contact, it's dynamite coming off. And you know, when it, whenever you can hit the ball as hard as he hits the ball, outcomes tend to be pretty good. Like there's just no, you don't yeah. even have to hit it that much. They just tend to be pretty good. Mike, fake sees no fake sees a guy you just brought up as your strong performer for last week, Nick Prado crushing the ball. He's got a 1.231 OPS so far this spring. Fake sees no fake sees on his performance. This was probably the hardest one for me. Uh, I went fake sees on this one on Nick Prado really crushing it. Uh, I, but I'm, I'm still optimistic. I don't want that to make you think like, oh, Mike's, you know, but. I haven't seen, I haven't seen a tracker. It's how, so different from Cole Reagans in that we've seen Cole Reagans do this at major in, at the level, you know, the highest level Nick Prado. We have not, I don't have enough of a track record on Nick Prado when it isn't in Arizona and all that stuff. That being said, I think the approach has legitimately changed. So this was by far the hardest one. I'm going fake season until I see it for a little while, at least in Omaha and then hopefully in major league baseball. But 
I'm it's it's something I reserve the right to flip flop on like a flip flopper. <laughs> hey man, if <laughs> when you get new evidence, people should change their opinions. Uh, I'm going no fakesies here from Nick Prado, and that's just no freak fakesies on his progression as a hitter. I think that progression is real. I don't think he would ever like. I don't think that twelve thirty one OPS would transition to the regular season. That's crazy, but. I think that we can buy a little bit that progression and say that, okay, he does look more aggressive in two strike counts. He does look like he's capable of getting to the edges of the strike zone better, right? Like he does look like he's got a little bit better hit tool in that regard, you know? And so we are, I think we're, I think I'm comfortable saying that, saying that that's real. Now, does that mean I think he should start the season in major league baseball? Not necessarily. If a spot like opened up or made itself apparent, sure, maybe, Uh, but I'd be fine with him going down and proving it for real in triple a and then getting time when a spot opens up or when, you know, someone gets traded or something like that. I'd be fine with that as well, but I am actually buying. I think it's a real, no fakesies on that uh, progression uh, for him as a hitter. I'd say him and here's and Nick Lofton are, are making, they have to be making guys like Garrett Hampson feel like, uh, you know, if I don't start doing something with his bat stuff could get bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. Especially Nick Lofton. Now, now Prado can't play any of the positions that Hampson can play. And so that's, yeah, (laughs) that is what it is, but, uh, he's gotta be, Prado's gotta be making some guys feel nervous because, you know, you don't go out and hit 1200 as an OPS and guys are feeling real comfortable. You know, um, another guy like Prado, who's kind of been the talk of the pitching staff to some degree, Alec Marsh is dealing right now. Uh, Mike fakesies, no fakesies on Alec Marsh dealing in spring training. He's got a 0.90 whip and a 0.90 ERA right now. Here's why I'm going fakesies. That's great. And I love, we, we love friend of the show, Alec Marsh. Like we, we love Alec Marsh. We want him to do great, but we watched him today and he had great numbers today, but we still saw some of the Alec Marshy things, you know, the get a get two strikes on a guy, throw a pitch, no non-competitive pitch, you know, like uh, we still saw, you know, him walk two guys in an inning. We saw some hard hit balls that went right at guys. Like the one thing we didn't see was a lot of, we didn't see a home run. We didn't see a lot of deep fly balls or anything like that. So maybe he's going to be able to limit those home runs. I don't know. I like the strikeout numbers, but I'm still not completely convinced on Marsh. Yeah, I put fakesies too, but only because because of the stuff that you said. But I am wondering, the thing that gets me to sort of consider that and to hold up a little bit uh, would be if he has found a way to limit fly balls, right? If he's found a way to limit fly balls, he's going to drop his home run rate drastically and he's going to be a different pitcher. He would be a good enough pitcher, even with the walks that he gives up that he shouldn't. He would be a very capable major leaguer if he could just limit the home runs, which would be limited if he could just keep the ball on the ground more, right? Like, and so he does have different and some different and better pitches this spring. And so, you know, it would not surprise me if he's found a way to do that to some degree. And he's actually good enough to be in major league baseball. It would not surprise me if he made the bullpen in some way, none of these things would surprise me. And none of the, it wouldn't surprise me if he made us look ridiculous for thinking that this was a fake seize. but at the same time, I can't buy on whole hog when I see him do things like, I mean, literally it happened to three hitters in a row today, I think, where he got ahead, got two strikes on them, and let them back into counts with non-competitive pitches. And so that sort of thing is just going to keep me from taking a step into being a true believer uh, on what Marsh could do in MLB. But he's going to get time this year anyway. I, I just, unless he gets hurt, he's going to get time in Major League Baseball, and he'll get a chance to prove us wrong. Final one here, Mike. Michael Walker scuffling so far in spring training. He's got a 6.35 uh, ERA and a 1.41 whip. Fakesies or no fakesies on that scuffling? Fakesies. His stuff still looks fantastic. His, you know, his command, even with the, even with the high whip and stuff, his command still doesn't look terrible. Like he's had a couple more walks than maybe you expect for him, but no, he's, he's doing fine. I'm not worried about him at all yet. Yeah, I'm going to go same. You, you just you trust a guy like Michael Walker who's been doing it for as long as he has. You know, it's spring training and he's only thrown like six innings or something like that. And so, yeah, he's going to be fine. The changeup looks great. He's he's going to be fine when when the when the calendar turns. He he'll be just fine. Royals Weekly is brought to you by Eric Oxer of West USA Realty. Phoenix has all of our favorite things: year-round golf, year-round baseball, and Eric Oxer of West USA Realty. 
Whether you want to buy your dream retirement home or just stay a while and catch spring training, Eric can help you find the perfect house for you. We've known him for 30 years and trust him far more than we even trust each other. I did once uh, cut Mark's break line over a dispute related to Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and he knows what he did. It was it was my <laughs> turn to play, and you know it, okay? I don't care if you cut my breaks or not. I don't, I don't care if I have breaks. Eric yeah. does long-term rentals for the Snowbird crowd and home sales and purchases for those who want to stay a while longer. Are you a baseball player or parent who needs a place in the Phoenix area? Eric will find you the perfect spot fast. You want to spend your days shanking golf balls into the great beyond? Eric knows the golf scene like Mike knows Fish's entire catalog. Some people say they all sound the same. I say, groove often does, brother. Groove often does. <laughs> Find I Eric can't name online. One fish song. Eric... <laughs> <laughs> Find you love them all. Find Eric online at <laughs> ericoxer.com. If you can figure out how to spell his name, that's the key. That's the mystery. It's E R I C K A U X I E R dot com. Or just shoot him a text at 480-383-9745. That's 480-383-9745. Even if you're just curious about what he can do for you, he's 100% no pressure. One of the best people we know. And makes a great wedding officiant as he did marry me. Yeah. The Royals have more than a full slate of games lined up this week as they'll square off against the Giants, Rockies, Angels, D-backs, Guardians, Reds, and Cubs. There's a split squad game in there. That's why there's so many. Mike and I will be attending the Giants, Rockies, and D-backs games at least. We may decide to sneak off and go to one more as well. Mike, is there anything you're keeping a close eye on this week? There's there's way too many to include. We didn't get to see MJ or Hunter Renfro really do anything in the field. I still want to see those things. I know. Uh, literally we not, like not a ball we're got hit to either of them. We're talking... We're talking before the game, like, hey, keep your eye on Renfro. Keep your eye on MG. I want to see the jump. I want to see the angles. They didn't get hit one. They didn't get hit one ball the entire <laughs> the entire game. Um, so, yeah, still that. But I uh, also added to the list, uh, Enhil Zerpa. We're going to see him tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we both have stated that we think he's going to make the 26th man, probably in the bullpen if Lyles is okay, but maybe in that fifth spot if Lyles isn't okay. So we get to see him tomorrow. I'm excited about that. Uh, Michael Massey and the approach. I want to see, I want to keep seeing those good at bats from him. Like we saw one of those, a great one today. Uh, how does that continue to develop? And then my last thing is Hampson's ability to make this team. Does he show <laughs> anything offensively that says he should be on the team? I know we paid him. I know he's a free agent. I know he didn't. What does he have options? I don't think he doesn't have any options. No. No. So, I know we would have just have to release him then, but he hasn't shown me a whole lot, to be honest. So I haven't been super impressed with Garrett Hampson so far. Yeah. And what's weird is, so he obviously hasn't shown anything offensively. And so you kind of hope, well, is he, is he at least doing the real thing they brought him in to do, which is play good defense at multiple positions today. He got hit a ball at short. That was like 74 miles off an hour off the bat. Wasn't that far away from him and he couldn't come up with it. And I'm like, okay, well, that's what you're brought here to do. And you're giving no offensive value. Ew. Let's just say be a renter for now, Garrett. Let's be a renter right now, Garrett Hampson. <laughs> uh, you know? Um, yeah, I'm interested to watch Michael Garcia as I don't think he's really, he had a little hot start to spring training, but he's kind of started to get a little over aggressive and just wane a little bit. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more patient approach to the plate for him. Uh, I'm going to be watching, I'll tell you, I'll be watching Singer's next outing with an eagle eye Yeah, uh, because, you know, he uh, looked so bad today and I'll be really curious what the velocity looks like in that next one. Um, and then I'll be looking, uh, just paying attention for Lyles' health because he's going to throw that bullpen on mo or to live hitters on Monday. I'll be interested to see what they say about how that turns out. He might even be back on the mound uh, in the next, you know, five or six days if that works out. So we'll, we'll take a look at that uh, and see what Lyles is up to. Mike, given that there's about two weeks left of spring training, where do you expect the team to be in terms of its progression preparing for the season? Um, that's a tough question. I mean, I kind of expect them to be exactly where they are. Um, I, I guess I would like to have seen Waka go a little longer in the, his last start because he left before three. Singer had to be pulled in the second today. 
and didn't get out, then didn't get out of the third either when he, when they put him back in. So it's a little disappointing that Lyles is down and those two guys probably haven't pitched as many innings as you would like them to. Um, but other than that, and I don't even think that's a big deal. Like, I think they're exactly where they need to be progression wise. I don't think there's a lot to really decide on. It's like the last guy in the bullpen. Honestly, I don't think the fifth starter spot's really up for grabs. So last guy in the bullpen, do you keep a fifth outfielder? Those are really your two questions. Yeah, I and I expect the decision makers to have a vision forming for what the opening day roster will look like. So who that last guy in the bullpen is, what they're going to do in the, with the fifth starter, especially if Lyles, it turns out, just can't make it for opening day. Like, I, they're basically going to have to ramp him back up from the beginning. And so, you know, is he going to be done and ready in time and that sort of thing? And then the fifth outfielder question is always a question. What's going to happen with Drew Waters? Are they going to do something with Nick Prado? Do they think that he's earned a spot? I mean, I think it's a long shot, but maybe there are some questions there. But at this point, I expect the front office people to have an idea forming in their mind of what that opening day roster looks like, but also what that AAA roster looks like and who's the next guy on board. Who's the next guy who is going to come up when somebody struggles or somebody uh, gets hurt? Mike, is there anyone you want to particularly see pick it up over the next week? Yeah, Nelson Velasquez and Hunter Renfro. And I think you've kind of maybe seen that start to happen this week. Hunter Renfro hit, got a hit today and then hit another one pretty hard. So that was it, both against Blackburn. And then they brought in Newcomb, who throws a little harder, and he struck out. Uh, couldn't catch up to the fastball for Newcomb. So that was a little concerning, something we were kind of talking about coming into the season. But uh, I want to see those guys really show show what they can do offensively and show maybe that they're going to be a great pairing offensively. Uh, that's, that's kind of my big thing offensively. Yes. I want to see Singer start a lot. I, I want to see, I want to see Cole Reagan's throw just cause it's fun, <laughs> but, uh, I need, <laughs> I need uh sing, I need Singer to pick it up. I need Velasquez and Renfro to, to round out the final pieces of this offense to start, to start to make sure it's going to be a top, hopefully 10 offense if it can be. Uh, I'm going to be watching Kyle Isbell pretty closely, not because he needs to pick it up but because I want him to continue doing what he's doing and have the results match that good process. He's been, like I said, we, we watched him take at least two really good plate appearances today, hit the ball really hard in those plate appearances uh, and just not be rewarded for it. And so what I worry when guys do that is that they end up getting out of their process, chasing results. I want to see him stay in his process and those results will come because, you know, if the process is good, if he's getting ahead and counts, he really can, hit the ball pretty decently hard and uh, that will, that will end up working out well for him. We'll end this week's episode. Like we end every episode with our just about outside segment where we talk about something that's interesting to us outside the world of baseball. Mike, we spent a lot of time on the road in communicado over the last few days. What could you possibly have to talk about? Let us know. <laughs> oh, I got a bone to pick here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to go. Let me talk to your manager kind of thing on you here. All right. You're going to Karen. How about You're this? You're going to go call Karen on him. It's, it's right. How about this? F you Pratt, Kansas. All right. Pratt, Kansas. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. We're not friends anymore because I got pulled over in Pratt, Kansas. Damn it. <laughs> and was I speeding by 12 miles an hour? Yes, I was. Okay. Yes, I was. But here's why I was. This is a tiny little town, people. Okay, it goes from 65 or 70. I don't I don't remember. Now, this is a highway that goes through this town. 65. And when you enter the town, it changes to 45. So I'm going 42. I'm going under the speed limit. Okay, I get pulled over and the guy goes, oh, no, the speed limit here is 30. It changes down to 30 again in a town that's like a mile and a half long. It goes from 65 to 45. Then you got to know to go to 30. And this cop knows this. Oh, he knows it. Okay. All right. Now he was very nice. He let me off with a warning. Thank you, sir, for protecting us, for protecting the town. Good people of Pratt, Kansas. But come on, man. They'll be getting people in the 30. You know, if they're going still 65, I get it. Okay. Throw the book at them. They'll be pulling me over, going 42 under what I think the speed limit should be, what it should be. I mean, come on now. Anyway. Listen my, to you. That's my, a very, that's a very Karen, uh, just a bit outside there. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Change the rules for me. I mean, come on. Uh, <laughs> Don't need to anyway. go down to 30 miles an hour through Pratt, Kansas. Get out of here. Uh, 
So one of the things that I always get reminded of when we come to, I, I say this like we've been down here a bunch of times. This is my second time in Arizona. Uh, but one of the things I love down here is you walk around, you go out to the ball game or whatever, and you see some bunch of people wearing enormous hats. And so my just about outside <laughs> for this week is I love big hats and I cannot lie. Okay. I love them. I love to see people with hats that are so enormous that they will never be touched by the sun. I'm going to get one while I'm down here because I have a little bucket hat that I wear out to the games now to make sure I don't, I have a bald spot, like a little, uh, Friar Tuck bald spot going on over yeah, here. I don't yeah. want to get burned, so, so you know, like, and so, and so I want a big straw hat to wear to keep the sun off me, but I love them. I, I used to think to myself like, Oh, big hats. Who would wear those sorts of things? I would wear those sorts of things because I love big hats now. <laughs> I love big hats and I cannot lie. I'm going to get me one. Mike and I were at the game today, which was at Ho-Ho Cam where the A's play. And Mike forgot his hat. And so he was going to buy one. Oh, but it was man. all A's branded stuff. And so he's like, yeah. I'm not buying an A's branded hat. We're going to have to wait till we, we're going to surprise tomorrow. We'll pick up a, a Royals uh, branded big ass straw hat. Uh, and then I'll be living right. So if you see me walking around with a giant ass straw hat, say hi, tip your hat to me. Do something and we'll acknowledge tip your, that we're living tip the Tip your even hat. bigger hat to me. Yeah. If you have a bigger hat, then I will bow to you. Uh, but, you know, tip a, tip something. When I say big, I'm, uh, you can't see me if you're listening. But on YouTube, I'm talking out to here. I'm going to be tipping people to hat like this. Good day, sir. You know, it's going to be wonderful. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Uh, anyway, that's all we have for this week. Come back tomorrow. Cause we're going to put out an episode tomorrow as well. Why not? And so, uh, yeah, it's going to be a almost everyday affair here talking about what we see, uh, out at camp, uh, going to get some, a look at some minor leaguers tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, join us again, uh, until we see you next time, be good to each other and go Royals.